The attack happening here along Iverson Street. The bus pulling up, stopping. One girl gets off, but the three others jump on the bus and immediately pull out that gun. This was an attempted murder. Plain and simple. Let's call it what it is. Martin Diggs, head of the bus drivers union, describes a ruthless attack. Pulled the trigger three times, but for some reason, by the grace of God, the gun didn't go off and bullets flew out of the gun. Multiple sources confirming the bus's onboard video system recording the whole thing. A point blank attempt to shoot the middle schooler in the head. And when the gun didn't fire after three tries, a physical beating before the attackers ran off. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. We gotta talk about a crazy story out of Maryland, near Washington, D.C., where allegedly three thugs, that's what I'm calling them, because, I mean, to pull this type of move, this is just nothing but thuggery, okay? Uh, three thug teenagers hopped on a bus and tried to kill a middle school student point blank and by the grace of god the gun did not go off despite the student uh pulling the trigger three times again this story right here is just absolutely insane but you won't hear about it from the mainstream liberal media because they're too busy simping for criminals take a look prince george's county police have released photos of three very young suspects who they say forced their way right into a school bus Monday to try and kill a middle schooler. That gun jam, though, police said, and then the boys ran. So tonight there's a lookout for those boys and a whole lot of fear. Scott Broom is in Oxon Hill where this happened on Monday to tell us more. Scott. Well, a measure of the anxiety tonight behind us here. We have Prince George's County Police at this intersection here to protect kids as they get off school buses late this afternoon. The incident we're talking about happened Monday as a school bus pulled up here at Sutler Drive and Iverson Street, and that's when these three kids pushed their way on board with a pistol in hand. Tonight, Prince George's County police here to protect kids as they get off the bus as pictures of three juveniles were released by authorities. The boys boarding that school bus Monday and pushing past the bus driver and an aide on board. One juvenile carrying a semi-automatic pistol. According to police, the gunman put the gun to the chest of a middle schooler and repeatedly tried to shoot, but the gun was jammed. So the gunman used it to beat the victim who survived with cuts and bruises. Police say the attackers then ran. This grandmother of middle schoolers said she lives in the neighborhood. I'm just not understanding how these kids get guns and stuff. Do you fear for these children? I fear for the kids and us as well. Because what if a dad would have stepped in and tried to stop and the gun didn't jam? Both the bus driver and the aide on board during the incident are so terrorized they've taken leave, according to fellow driver Martin Diggs, who's president of the union local representing drivers. But they're afraid to come out of the house because the suspects that got on the bus, their faces were covered. So they don't know who these people are. This, this particular issue that happened on the school bus is one incident of many incidents. Diggs said school employees are constantly threatened with injury because of an epidemic of fighting on buses and in schools. Diggs said the student who was targeted attended the non-traditional middle school program at Edgar Allan Poe School in Suitland. Diggs noted the school system has cameras in the majority of its bus fleet. The boy's mother spoke with us. She says her son was beaten and pistol whipped and she's angry. They tried to kill my son three times and they failed. And you know what I would say to them? You are cowards. You're going to forever be a coward. You're not going to have any good luck and you will get caught. Prince George's County Public Schools said in a statement that they're horrified by the incident, grateful no lives were lost, adding the highest priority is keeping students, staff and families safe on school grounds and classrooms and school buses. They also say they'll continue working with law enforcement partners during the investigation to ensure safety for all members of the Prince George's County Public School community. Now, we understand that there may be video of the incident from the school bus camera. And coming up at 7, a school bus driver tells us his colleagues are terrified. Yeah, so you've seen that, you heard that. I mean, what is there to say? This happens every single damn day day in this country and you don't hear a fucking word about it from these people that claim they care about black lives so much okay 
You don't hear anything about it. But you know, let let a homeless man who terrorizes people on a day-to-day -day basis in a New York City subway get choked out because he was terrorizing people, okay? Has a history of assault, including hitting an elderly woman in the face. And these people boo-hoo whining and crying. Oh my God, this is so terrible. This country's so racist. White people out to kill blacks. Our lives are in danger because white men want to kill us. Let a black trans person who's trying to steal get killed after trying to attack a security guard out in San Francisco at a Walgreens. You got activists losing their minds. Going to the county meeting, screaming and crying, boo-hooing. Talking about how black lives are in danger. But every fucking day in this country, we have kids that are getting shot and killed. We have instances like this where this child was lucky by the grace of God he was saved because the gun jammed up as is to his chest, pointed to his chest, not by an adult, but by teenagers, little thugs, criminals, menaces to society. And you're never going to hear people about it. You're never going to hear a word about it. This is not going to be on CNN. It's not going to be on ABC. It's not going to be on MSNBC. But yet again, these are the people that try to lecture us on black lives. We, we care about black folks so much. When the biggest problem, the biggest issue, the biggest threat to a black person's life, a black child's life, is another black person, more specifically the black thugs that are terrorizing these communities. But you know, they're, they're not called sellouts. They're not called slurs. They're not demonized nearly as much as the black conservative is. They're not demonized nearly as much as the white man is. There will be no attention brought to something like this. A story that again, in, in my opinion, I mean, this deserves national news. I mean, this is insane. These kids basically hijacked a bus for the sole purpose of trying to assassinate another student, a child, a teenager. This story could have very easily been three teenagers, three thugs, three criminals hop on a bus and assassinate another student. Point blank. They still beat him up, still jumped him. I mean, could you imagine being that student trying to go to sleep at night knowing that basically you almost got your chest blown in or you almost got your brains blown out because some reports say that they tried to shoot him in the head. Can you imagine trying to go to sleep at night knowing that you were this close to losing your life? Could you imagine being a parent, sending your kid to school, and having to worry about, again, thugs, criminals, other kids getting on the bus again and trying to assassinate your child. That is the reality and the fear that these people are living in in these communities. And you're not hearing a damn thing about it because they don't give one fuck. They don't care. They don't care. People are being terrorized on a day-to-day -day basis. And you got the progressive left not only out here celebrating criminals, but advocating and af actively implementing policies to go easy on them. In a sane world, if these three thugs are caught, they should be tried like adults and locked away for a very, very, very long time. I don't think you can re rehabilitate uh, kids who will go out of their way to try to assassinate another student like that. I don't necessarily know if that can be re rehabilitated. You have to basically remove all those kids from these communities. You got to get them off the street. You got to lock them up. I'm sorry. Because they're acting like adults. Clearly, they have the mindset of adults, of adult killers, of adult assassins. So you got to treat them like that. You got to lock them away for a long, long, long time.
They shouldn't see the light of day for a long time. And who knows, maybe parents should be charged as well too because I don't know how to, how in the world does a parent allow their child to basically become an assassin, to get access to a firearm and to, to go on a bus and try to kill another student like that. That is insanity. I've never heard a story like this before. It's insane. And I cover a lot of these stories every day and it's just, it just gets worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And the most frustrating part about it is that you don't hear a damn thing about it. Nobody seems to care. But they only care when there's a narrative. They want us to care about black lives when it's a criminal loses life at the hands of a white person. Now, all of a sudden, people want to care. Guys, could you imagine if this was three white students that hopped on a bus and tried to assassinate a black student like that? You would never hear the end of this story. Okay, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, those white kids will be locked away for a long, long, long time. Okay, they will be demonized to no end and their parents as well, too. Their par they, 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 there will be calls for the parents to be locked up. There will be protests and riots at the parents' house. You, It would be no end to it if you had three white kids that jumped on a bus and tried to assassinate a black student. What do you think the response would be? All hell would break loose. They be talking about, oh, this is a prime example of how white parents are raising their kids to try to assassinate and to shoot black people. Black uh, kids can't even go to school without worrying about being killed by white kids. That would be the narrative. But the reality is, is that black kids can't even go to school without being worried about ki being killed. Not by white students, not by white kids, but by black kids, other black kids. Because these kids are being raised to be absolute savages. That is savage behavior, right? Because again, they're being raised in uncivilized neighborhoods. We have a major cultural problem in this country. And I guarantee you so-called black media, <laughs> they ain't gonna talk about it. Roland Martin, he ain't gonna talk about it. Martin Lamont Hill, he ain't gonna talk about it. All these people that claim they love black people so much, <laughs> right? They so down with the team, with the culture. Okay, black lives. We fighting for black folks. They don't give a damn about black lives. But they say, hey, black conservatives, y'all sellouts. Black conservatives are the only black people that got the cojones to call this stuff out. They got the, they, they, we the only people that actually really acknowledge that this is a problem. Everybody else wants to ignore it and then blame the white man for all the problems. They quit the ambulance chase for a black person that is killed by a white person. But again, for a black person getting killed by another black person, it's just another you-know-what dead. That's it. That ain't no news. We don't, need to, we don't need to cover that. We don't need to talk about that. It's absolutely amazing. It, it really is, man. Um, again, thank God that this kid's life was spared. I hope they find these three thugs and... Uh, when they find them, they're locked away for a long, long, long time. These kids don't belong in society. Um, and again, like I said, thank God this kid is still alive. Um, this is an unbelievable story. I'm speechless. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.